I just want to go ahead and go ahead and give a real quick um, explanation. We love to do these morning devotionals. So if we try to do them in 30 minutes, that's a really short time. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to answer your questions. If you have questions, please, please ask us. Um, but if you would direct message us on Twitter at the same hand handle, and that's Masterwork C-O-L-S. Mm -hmm. um, and or you could find us on Facebook and that's forward slash Masterwork Columbus or you can find us at our website which I hope you've already found that I did so if you have questions if you would just go ahead and forward them to us on our website on uh, Facebook she says yes she's still Pennsylvania at yeah. or if you would go ahead and um, put up comment to us on our website or you can email us at masterworkcolumbus at gmail.com again that's masterworkcolumbus at gmail.com and we would love to answer you we try to answer you as fast as we can like within a couple hours um, but always questions pop up about the old testament it, it's it's sort of enigmatic but that's what i love that's part of what i love about the lord is that um he is such an enigmatic mysterious god we can't understand we have talked. We have to Let's talk, talk then, David. <laughs> um, and so, um, God is such a mysterious God, and we can't wrap our mind fully around Him. And so, yeah, we're still learning um, stuff about absolutely. Him. And, and His mysterious ways just endear Him to me more. Yeah. And so, anyway, definitely. if you'll just if you want to ask questions, we love it. Ask questions, just send them to us there. Um, and are you ready to dive in? I'm ready to dive into Genesis chapter 15. Uh, and let's study about our enigmatic God. You know, it's so funny. There's there are and I, can I take a second and just talk about something? Sure, parent. That there way. are paradoxes that the Scripture allows us. You know, in one sentence, Jesus says, mm. "If they're not for us, they're against us." And in the other, in another sentence, he says, "If they're not, uh, if they're." Um, uh, if they're not against us, they're for us. So, you know, there are these paradoxes that we see in Scripture. You know, Scripture talks about how God hides himself in darkness and, and no man can fully understand him. But then in the New Testament, it talks about how the Holy Spirit has come and we can know the mind of God if we are full of the Holy Spirit. So there's these moments where you get both sides of the coin. Well, they're all, it's all over. Um, yeah. You know, I what, what I've think of today in the New Testament is where James says, good morning. Um, good morning. Oh, it's, she, she must be having internet connection issues. Okay. Um, um, uh, is where James says, um, uh, faith by works without faith with faith without works is dead. And then, um, Paul says it's by grace we're saved and not by works so that no man can boast. Yeah, I love so. the fact that I can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You know, it's just one of those things where it's 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 really difficult to understand the scriptures. And the scripture says that. It says uh, no man can understand the scriptures and what the Holy Spirit um, uh, illuminates it to him. So, yeah. so the reality is that we have a, we have a Bible full of very interesting things that seem to contradict themselves at times. They're not contradictions. What they're trying to do is they're trying to help you to reach a middle ground by help of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that's, that's a really cool thing. So let's jump into the enigmatic, Chapter wonderful, 15. fully known God that we are discovering still in <laughs> chapter 15. Okay. All right. Are you going to read? All right. Yes, I'll read since okay. you're going to uh, lead us through it. Yep. So chapter 15 um, of Genesis and we're in the NIV. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Yeah. Your very great reward. But Abram said, O oh, sovereign God, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. One of my favorite, favorite verses. Okay, now in verse 7. Mm -hmm. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of, us, of it. But Abram said, Oh, sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? 
So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all of these, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. Their birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but, the, but Abram drove them away. Okay, now in verse 12 of Genesis chapter 15. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own. They will be enslaved and mistreated for hundred for uh, 400 years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possession. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace in, uh, and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. Cool. On the day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kadmonites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Rephites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. Well done. I've she heard, got all those names right. I've heard the man on in my NIV Bible read them. <laughs> So get into fifteen. I'm really excited about it. Sorry. Yes, no, it's mean no, it's a, no, no, no. It's a, it's good, it's good. So hopefully, we, that's yeah, what we, we got to get. That's what on. we tried to. Well, I'm I'm working on it. Okay, so starting at the beginning of uh, chapter fifteen, and what's really great is that Jesus comes to Abram here and uh, and sort of um, helps him out with what's going on. And talks to him about what just happened. Now, if you notice in the chapter before this, we mm -hmm. talked about this last week, that Abram had just, um, yeah, that that's true. Yeah, he that is, the KJV is, is a lot better. But yeah. if you notice last week, we talked about how Lot um, fought... Uh, how Abram fought for Lot against the kings that were aligned against Sodom and Gomorrah. So these kings went through and took out all the riches of Sodom along with the, the women and children. And apparently Lot went with them um, and was captured with them. And Abram goes and fights for them and brings them back. Now, the king of Sodom said, I will give you all of the, the spoils that you've gotten from this thing. Just return my people to me. And, uh, and Abram says, no, I'm not going to do that so that I can, so, so that no man has, has lifted me up. It's only God's hand. So notice what God says in chapter, uh, in the first verse of chapter 15, he says, don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and I am your very great reward. Notice those two things real quick. So David has just, I mean, David, Abram has just aligned against five kings. I mean, he's basically just attacked a group of rebels, a group in, in a civil war. He's just attacked those people in order to get a uh, lot back. So he's probably, he's probably afraid. You know, God doesn't say don't be afraid unless there's an opportunity for us to be afraid. <laughs> and let me just mention in the scripture, it says, do not be afraid 365 65 times. times. So, so this is a moment in which Abram's a little scared. He's just made some, some very real enemies. And God turns around and says, I am your shelter. I am your shield. And then he also says, I am your reward. Now notice, uh, Lot turned, I mean, uh, Abram turned away the reward of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God is saying at this point, I am your reward. Don't worry. Man doesn't need to give you things. I am going to give you things. I am your payment. I am your possession. So so what he's saying to, to Abram here is, don't worry, I got you back. That's All this so stuff that personal. happened. He is such a personal God. Isn't it though? It's not like a, well done. No, it was like, a, hey, don't worry. I, I got you in this thing. You know, it wasn't a, a detached. Not only situation. did he call him by name, he, he answered his... the very specific mm -hmm. um, moment that he had just been through. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That's, so, yeah. okay. So anyway, and then uh, in verse two, Abram says, "Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless?" And he's talking about how he doesn't have an heir, and uh, and so he's got a guy named Eliezer, his right hand man. Um, and he says, this guy's going to inherit my household. Now, I love the fact that Abram here, Abraham, uh, uh, Abram here talks truthfully to the Lord. 
you know, he, he talks honestly to God. And he says, God, how are you going to accomplish what you said to me that you're going to accomplish? This is not a disrespectful thing from Abram. This is a thing where Abram is saying, God, you, you gave me a promise, and now I'm waiting for that promise, but it doesn't seem like that front promise is coming true. Will you tell me how, how it is that it's going to come true? He asked, he asked how is this going to happen? Yeah, how, how is it going to happen? How, how, how am I going to see it happen? I think a lot of times we don't ask questions of the Lord because we're afraid of what he's going to say. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because we're afraid, you know, either we're afraid, oh, he's going to get mad at me if I ask him that question, or um, uh, we're afraid of the answer, but I have to give it to Abram. He has... Um, lots of, he has lots of courage to, yeah. to say, how is this going to happen? You right. Know? Yeah. And, and you know what? He, he's saying, he's not testing the Lord, but he's saying, Lord, can you confirm your promise to me? Confirm what it is that yep. you said to me would do. So the Lord does. And the, the Lord, the word of the Lord came to, comes to him and says, uh, Eliezer is not going to be the deal. I'm going to give you a child from your body. Now it's important that he, he clarifies here. I love that God clarifies, confirms, and then illustrates his promise, um, to, uh, That's to Abram. Good. You know, he says, man won't be your, uh, this man will not be your heir. Your son will be of your own flesh and blood. So he clarifies, it's not going to be Eliezer. It's going to be your son. And then he says, uh, he takes him. I love, I love it when the scripture says, and he took him outside, like a parent grabbing a child by the hand and, and pulling them along and saying, come here, come here, come here, come here. So the, um, the Lord takes him outside and says, look up into the sky, count the stars. Uh, if indeed you can count them and says, so shall your offspring be. So he clarifies, confirms, and then illustrates his promise. And you see God doing that over and over and over in scripture. He illustrates it over and over. Jesus was a master storyteller. And so he illustrated the kingdom of God to us. And this is a way that God breaks down the barriers of communication here to give a, to, to give a picture that we can understand. And God gives it to Abram in several ways. Look at the look at the the dust on the ground. They're going to be as numerous as the dust. Look, look at the stars. They're going to be as numerous as the stars. God continues to say to Abram, "Hey, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. You got your head down the line." I'm writing notes. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is good. All right, go ahead. Well, I need you. I need your. I need your your voice in on this stuff. I don't. I don't want to be like talking head. All right. Anyway. Um, so, uh, so, and then the verse directly after this says, Abram believed in the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. I love it. So this is one verse that sort of like illustrates all of faith. I mean, this, this thing kind of comes back and it comes back around in Galatians and Romans talking about how we are saved by faith. And I want to, I want to bring out a few interesting things about this verse that I, that I found out. Um, uh, the the word believed there was literally up up uh, to uphold and to be faithful to. Um, <laughs> goodbye. We'll see you soon. Uh, goodbye from Russia <laughs> to Russia. Um, uh, but uh, b- the word believed here it's actually the first time that the word believe is mentioned in the Old Testament. This is the first mention of the word belief, and it literally means to uphold or to be faithful to. So there's actually, it's it's more of a, it's more of a, um, I know sometimes that we can get stuck on the, uh, the, the, the grace only, solo, solo gratia, which, which basically is a, is a staple of our faith um, from, uh, from Martin Luther that basically right. says that we are saved by grace alone. And I, I'm totally there. But we know through the scriptures that it mentions that faith is dead without works. And so there's an active part of this believing. It's a being faithful to. Um, so it's one of those things where where God says something and we are faithful to believe what it is that he's saying. We're faithful to uphold yeah. that which he's saying. Yeah. It's a step of faith to believe some things the Lord has told me. Yeah. You know, some things in scriptures, it's a fa- it's a step of faith to believe. But it's funny how, you know, there's this um, snowball effect of, of belief and have faith in God. Yeah. You know, and God knows that about us, that we need to start small, you know. And so... So God didn't start with anything fantastical for Abram. God just said, I'm going to give you a son. You want a son? You don't have an heir? I'll give you an heir. That's good. We can start there. 
We can start there. And then he says, and then he says, and by the way, your heir is going to become like the stars. Well, so, but he said that after saying, I'm going to bless you so that you'll be a blessing. Right. You know, it gets a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and, and you know, when when difficulty comes, we definitely want to know that God is going to bless us in the uh, out of the difficulty that we have. I mean, if I'm walking through something really hard, I want to know that at the end of this, gonna be a reward. there's going to be some kind of reward, that this is worth it. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Even parenting, like even with my kids, I'm like, oh, they're being really difficult today. <laughs> I know at the end of the day, I'm going to get to sit down with them and cuddle them. And that's my reward. And, and this we're is like we are so like that as humans. Oh That's yeah. Good. Well, God knows this. God knows that we're humans and he knows that happiness is a factor of what we live off of. You know, so so he continually gives us and in fact Paul mentions this several times in the New Testament where he talks about our great reward is coming. Our reward is heaven. Our reward is what we're going to receive. Jesus said that too. Said don't don't store it up on uh, here That's good. but store it uh, store it up in heaven. And so Anyway, there's there's that carrot that kind of keeps us going towards, yeah, it's all worth it. You're right, uh, Donna. It sure um, is. Okay. So then, um, so so believed, upheld, faithful to. First time the word appears in scripture. This is also the faith that is referred to in Romans 4 and Galatians 3. If you guys want to turn there and take a look at that at some point, that's really great. Um, but uh, right, uh, and, then, and then in the second half of this verse, it talks about it was credited to him as righteousness. Righteousness, justice, vindication, literally. It's a legal term. So, so the deal is, is that what was happening here is there was a transference of legal, uh, uh, of legal vindication. Go ahead. But vindication's not only that thing which sets something, you know, into motion. Vindication, the connotation of vindication here is very interesting to see that he won the this little civil war, as you called it, just in the previous chapter. He was vindicated. He was. His, his honor and his protection and his household was upheld in the face of his enemies. Yep. When I think of vindication, I think of somebody has wronged me and I want this to be set right because, ju because I want righteous judgment to take place. Vindication is the result of righteous judgment. Yeah, yeah. So the idea here is, and, and I love the fact that in God's courtroom of heaven, that w what was going on here is that God had a lot of, um, he, he made a lot of rules in place of the way that holiness was supposed to be. Obviously, Abram was new <laughs> to what was going on. Uh, there was a big separation between mm -hmm. Noah and Abram. And so God is saying, hey, you believed in me. Therefore, I'm going to accredit you as fulfilling all of the things that I believe that you should, uh, th that, that I set down that you should do in order to be holy. So, so what's happening here is Abram is brought into the fold at this point. Um, I'm sorry, this is just a really good verse and no, I'm go expounding ahead. I, on I it. No, that's totally fine. I'm listening. So anyway, those two words are the first time they are ever mentioned in scripture is here in this verse, righteousness and believing or faith. So, so it's very interesting that these are the first times that we get these concepts from the scripture is, uh, during the, the story of Abram. Okay. Then it goes on and it says, the Lord said, and I want to get to this because there's some interesting stuff here and I got to hurry. You got to hurry. I got to yeah. hurry. Okay. So um, then it says, uh, then God says to him, I am the Lord. I brought you, brought you out of here. Abram says, but sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of the land? So now here's two promises. I'm going to give you an heir. Okay. How's that going to happen? Boom. Then he says, uh, then God says, I'm going to give you the land. <laughs> Abram says, okay, now tell me. God, explain to me again how I'm going to take that because I just fought these guys and we've got some serious mm -hmm. work to do ahead of me. And uh, uh, again, Abram has no need to pull punches. He asks the Lord to confirm his promises. God answers Abram in this sense by making a covenant. So the answer to Abram's question, God doesn't give him a, hey, here's how it's going to happen. God says, all right, let's go ahead and set the parameters. He says, now I'm going to start, and now I'm going to give you a... It's going to start here. Yep. 
Okay, so then God says to him, bring me a heifer, bring me a goat. And he makes a shopping list. Okay, give me these things. We're going we're gonna to put them here. We're going to make this legal. We're going to make this official. This is my promise to you. So Abram brought them all out, cut them in two, arranged them in halves opposite each other. And then, um, the, uh, and then Abram has to wait. And the vultures come in and Abram has to drive them off and, and those kind of things. Now, there's some interesting things that I want to pull out here. Yeah, go ahead. God decides to cut a contract with Abram here. Uh, in that time, the way that a legally binding contract would happen is that um, uh, one party would take their animal and cut it in half, lay the two halves open, and both parties would walk through the center of this. They would walk between the pieces. They would walk between the pieces in order to co- sort of sign a covenant or a contract between the two. They, there was some, it's so that there was some skin in the game. They, they were losing something in this deal or they were having this, uh, they were halving this thing in order to say, I, I've got something in the, in the game here. So, so this is what God is asking Abram to do. Make a contract with me. Make a covenant with me. And so he tells him, and Abram cuts him, but God doesn't come right away. God doesn't show up in a, in a powerful way just then. In fact, it takes so long that Abram has to start driving away the vultures. And let me just stop to say this. There may be a promise today that God has made you, and it may seem like God is taking his sweet time in order to mm-hmm. fulfill that promise. Been there. You know, it's this sure. concept that we have, um, uh, it, it's this concept that we have that God should come in a mighty way. We, you know, unfortunately we have this backwards, we have this backwards look at scripture where, you know, the next verse, God does something, you know, and we don't see the time that it takes in between God promising and God fulfilling. Right. And sometimes... Or if we do see it and understand it chronologically, we saw, oh, it was a cakewalk because they knew it was going to happen because right. God said it and, it and it happened. And then it immediately like, happened. You know, sometimes you got to drive the vultures away from... From your sacrifice. From, from your sacrifice, from your promise. Sometimes you gotta you got to protect the promise that God has made to you. And you fulfill your your side of what God has asked you to do, and then you got to wait for God to fulfill His side, and that can be a difficult time. It that can, can be a be. difficult time. Absolutely, absolutely. That means you have to be vigilant and keep watch and remember what the Lord has said, and hold on, hold steadfastly to the things that are probably the most difficult. You know, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Abraham, there was no more. There was no further instruction for Abraham. For Abram, except... Yeah, I have to keep catching I mean, myself. I know, there was no Abram. further instruction for Abram, except put the do take the animals, have them, put them on the altar. And then that was it. And then he waited on God to, to answer. Waited on God to, to fulfill to the promise. To give him more steps. And he never gave up hope. You know, I think Abram had seen God move before, so he had the hope that God was going to show up, no matter what it looked like. And Abram stayed there. Even, it says in the next couple of verses, even as the sun was setting... Yep, he was standing on his promises. You're mm-hmm. exactly right. Even as the sun was setting, even as the day was ending, Abram didn't give up. Absolutely. He kept driving the vultures away, and he stayed near where he knew God was going to show up. Yeah. So then God comes, and he brings this darkness in with him, and and night in with him, and Abram falls asleep. Now, I believe that God may have been operating here as... Um, uh, what's it called? The guy who gives you the Novocaine. Uh, uh, anesthesiologist. An anesthesiologist. Because he's about to tell Abraham some really difficult things. He's about to tell Abram some really difficult things. So he comes in and he basically lays out for <laughs> Abram, I'm going to fulfill my contract, but there's going to be some difficulty along the way. Right. <laughs> right. And he talks about how his people are going to be... Uh, enslaved, and he talks about how um, there's going to be difficult, it's going to be 400 years, and anyway, there's a lot of difficult things that God has to tell Abraham. Yeah, and and it says a deep darkness came over him. What an, you know, I've always read that and gone, deep darkness, you know, and how was that? And so, you know, I just asked the Lord what that was about, and there was this, I think it was just this empathic sense of despair for his heirs. I, I didn't mean to rhyme. 
Yeah. Um, but just this empathic sense of of the pain that they would go through. You well, know? well. So yeah. So he was sort of yeah. Anyway, I think I I, I think that God reveals this in a dream to Abram because I'm not sure if Abram could have taken this fully. Uh, conscious. Standing up. Yeah, standing up. It was one of those things where God was being, I think, gracious to Abram. Absolutely. Because it's hard to hear that your kids are going to go through such such a terrible time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, anyway, but he, he then confirms... Once the, this is all done, they're going to come out with great possessions. It's going to be a, it's going to be okay. And God continues to kind of love Abram through this whole thing. So, so Abram asked, God answered, which I am, um, I think, would remind us of the question. Sometimes we need to be careful what we ask for. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes if we want to know the future, I think God's going to tell us. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if we're always going to be ready. Yeah, when Job, when Job <laughs> asked God, God said, brace yourself like a man. Brace yourself like a man. So, but anyway, God's heart is always kindness and love towards us. So, uh, anyway, I love, and, and I think, and I want to just do an aside here. I know we're way off schedule, yes. but I just want to do an aside here. It says in the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here for the sin of the Amorites has not reached its full measure in verse 16. Mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting that God is, is saying, um, here's the deal. The, the sin, um, hasn't reached its full part. So I am, uh, I am going to wait until that time in order to do this. God is basically saying that he is setting up the pieces of what's going to happen yes. here. Um, and it's interesting that we see that same thing reflected in the New Testament as well. God's, uh, Jesus says about the parable of the wheat and the tares that, that, the, um, that the angels come to the master and say, or the workers come to the master and say, can we pull both of them up? And the master says, no, let's wait for them to grow up and right. grow out of one another so that we can